Electric superbikes are a new breed of bike and, trigger warning, are extremely expensive, with only the lucky few of us ever hoping to buy one. But even if we can't own one, we still love drooling over the kind of bikes brands can dream up when money is no object. So without further ado, here are our top 5 electric superbikes for 2021. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the little bell icon so that you get notified every time we upload a new video. The Turbo Creo caused quite a stir when it was released. Not just because of its racy aesthetic and beautiful paint job, but because at £11,500 it cost as much as a new car. Or in bike terms, you could buy 3.97 whole specialised Roubaix Sports for the same price. With the Turbo Creo, Specialised are unashamedly aiming for the premium end of the e-bike market, squeezing all the top-end components into a bike that oozes affluence. Just taking a look at the specification, you can see that they have left nothing to chance from nose to tail. A one-by drivetrain that mixes Shimano's Dura Ace Di2 with a long cage XTR rear mech, top-of-the-range Roval CLX50 carbon wheels shod with S-Works tyres, and a 240 watt battery teamed with a super light motor in the bottom bracket that promises 80 miles of assistance. The Turbo Creo echoes the geometry of the iconic Roubaix with a comfortable endurance ride that gobbles miles and rough roads alike. It even comes with the adjustable Future Shock 2.0 front damper to take the rough out of the road. At 13.7 kilograms for a size large, it's heavier than your standard carbon race bike but a lot lighter than a new car. So in our eyes, buying one is a win-win situation. Let us know if you agree in the comments. The Super 6 Evo in its non-assisted form has long been a bike radar favorite due to its classic racy ride quality and excellent handling. Cannondale haven't made this electric version any less of a road machine mixing what made the Super 6 Evo great with a well-integrated battery and X35 motor hidden in the rear hub. Along with a carbon frame, aero tube profiles and an aero cockpit, Cannondale are targeting the enthusiast market with this bike. It's for cyclists who want to enhance their riding and keep up high speeds all day long. The Super 6 Evo Neo impressed us with its massive range, busting out 75.9 miles with 1,124 meters of climbing. The range starts at a bargain price of £3,600 and heads up to £8,000 at the top of the range, which by our workings means you could buy three of the entry-level bikes for the cost of one S-Works Creo. That sounds like a bargain to us. The next bike might make you do a double take. Is that really an e-bike? Scott quite cleverly have designed the down tube of this bike to be exactly the same size as the non-motorised version. Except this one has a 250 watt battery hidden inside, paired with a rear hub motor. Along with its stealthy design, it comes with a list of components that might match bikes you might expect to see at the Tour. It's got a Dura Ace Di2 group set, Syncross carbon wheels, and a one piece Syncross carbon bar. It only weighs 10.9 kilograms too, which in the world of e bikes is positively featherweight. Scott insists this bike isn't going to make riding a bike any easier. Rather, it lets you do more, faster or further than you would have done before. In testing, we found it smashed the climbs, excelling when you put the effort in. At £8,349, it's definitely eye-wateringly expensive. But if you can ride something no one else knows is an e-bike, it's worth it for the kudos you'll get from your riding buddies at the top of the climbs, right? Let us know what you think in the comments. Trek launched the e-bike version of its classic endurance road bike back in 2018. The Domane Plus mirrors its non-assisting siblings closely, keeping the comfortable geometry and ISO speed features, but adding in the lightweight Fazua Evasion motor system to make a modern feeling e-bike. It's not just a bike for comfort though, with its OCLV carbon frame, Aeolus Plus 3V wheels and Ultegra Di2 drivetrain, we found that it rips along the road, cornering on rails and handles climbs with ease. With its plush tyres, it rides well on light gravel roads as well. Also, you can take out the battery if you want to ride unassisted, bringing the bike weight down to just shy of 11 kilos and giving you two bikes for the price of one. 
That's if you don't mind forking out the extra £70 for a down tube cover. Which, let's be honest, if you're spending between £7,800 to £10,700 on a bike, you'd probably stretch the extra mile for. Our last pick is a special one. With a record beating weight of just 10.3 kilograms, the Villiers Cento 10 Hybrid is truly on the frontier of e-bike technology. This is a bike which you might expect to see a pro rider on, designed with sleek race bike lines and a high quality, beautiful finish. As with the rest of Villiers bikes, the Cento is designed to be as slippery as possible. All the cabling is internal, the tube profiles are truncated, and Vilio has also managed to keep the usually chunky bottom bracket area found on e-road machines reasonably compact. The Q factor is the same as that of the regular Cento 10 Pro. This means it pedals and rides like the non-assisted race bikes in the rest of Villiers' lineup. The Cento 10 Hybrid is a blast to ride fast, and you will be riding fast if you're on this bike. The e-bike motion system offers a subtle yet powerful uphill assistance and rewards your climbing efforts. As it's paired with DI2, shifting is easy and smooth, and the power shifting button, which has been relocated to the bars, is very easy to use. The Cento 10 hybrid range starts at €7,900 and heads up to a lofty €11,200 for the top of the range model. What do you think to our list? Did we get it right? Or is there something else around the corner that we've missed? As always, let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. And click the little bell icon so that you get notified every time we upload a new video.